What's up, guys? It's your boy Zawoki back out with another Chris Watts video. Yes, we're getting into more Chris Watts content, and a lot of you guys have been sending me video after videos wanting me to take a look at this new information, this uh, new detail, um, more and more that just keeps coming to light about Chris Watts and Nicole Kessinger and their affair that they had, but it continues still to this day, which is flipping ridiculous. Uh, that they're still talking, they're passing notes and emails back and forth in code, and why people don't, there are literally, out of like 85% of people that believe that she is at fault, but there's another 15% that actually think that she's okay, she's fine, and I can't believe it, that, that she's still walking, she's still uh, getting away with breaking up a family, destroying a family, all because she wanted him for herself and he was willing to kill his family. Um, and I still to this day believe that Chris didn't kill his kids. I think Nicole Kessinger was the one that killed the kids because he couldn't bring himself to killing them. He killed his wife because of what they had con uh, conversed back and forth. But Nicole was there that day. I have no doubt about it. Nicole was at the house. Her phone pinged on, on the tower. She was there to help remove the bodies. Um, she was the one that put them in the oil tanks. And Chris was the one that disposed of Shanann. Um, unfortunately, this is definitely still a case that is highly talked about. Uh, people are saying we need to let it die. We need to let it go. Cold cases open up all the time. And murderers get caught 30, 40, 50 years later on. And I feel like if we get together and try to... Uh, figure out completely what has happened in this case more towards Nicole Kessinger. She can be held accountable finally and a hundred percent then the Watt family um, can live at rest uh, because I feel still justice is not completely served. I feel there's a lot of things that have been overlooked over um, invest or not even investigated properly and this channel that was sent to me by, again, hundreds of you, almost thousands of you, of Chris Watts blames his mistress for everything. In reason, though, the horrific case and new details that follow of the downward spiral of the Watts family. And I was like, you know what? We're going to watch it. See, because watching everything, we can pull pieces together and figure out exactly what happened. Now there's other videos that people are wanting me to watch is the body language. There's an actual video of notes that are being passed or letters being passed and forth between Chris and Nicole still to this day in code that you guys want me to watch. So if you guys want me to continue with these uh, videos, definitely please comment your guys' thoughts down below. Please let me know if you think Nicole Kessinger, a good amount of you guys, I think 90% of my viewers do believe that she's at fault, but there is a couple that have come through that says, leave Nicole alone. She did nothing wrong, which I still can't not believe. I didn't delete them. I let them pass because it's not negative, but I still can't believe that she's walking free and people are like, just leave her, let her be, leave her alone. So that being said, we're going to be watching a channel called swoop. Um, it's a female that looks like she definitely knows her stuff. Um, and she's put this together for us to watch and figure out exactly what more new details in the Horford case. Uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff that we probably already know and learned and stuff like that. But I want to get into everything that possibly we can to know about uh, Nicole and hopefully one day bring her to justice um, and give uh, Shanann, Bella, Cece, and little baby Nico the justice they deserve. So um, with that being said, let's get into the video. Bella, Celeste. If you're out there, just, just just come back. Like, if somebody has her, just please bring her back. I need to see everybody. Hello, County Communications, this is Stacey. Hi, Stacey. My name's Nicole, and I'm calling because I'm concerned about um, a friend of mine. Walked in the house, and nothing was vanished. Nothing was here. I mean, she wasn't She wasn't here. The kids weren't here. No, nobody was here. The husband of a missing pregnant woman is in jail and now charged with her The 33-year-old accused of his pregnant wife, Shanann, and their two daughters showed no emotion. His arrest, confession, conviction, and sentencing, it all went down really fast. What happened in the Watts family? He's been the best thing, besides my children, that has ever happened to me. He didn't have a wedding ring on his finger. He mentioned that he did have a significant other. All right, you ready? 
Okay, well, I just realized that he was lying to me, and I was like, well, if you can lie to me about this, what else are you lying to me about? This is the most inhumane, vicious crime that I have handled out of the thousands of cases that I have seen. Chris Watts thinks he deserves to get out of prison. I want you to close your eyes and imagine a scenario with me for a moment. You've just returned home from a weekend work trip and you're exhausted. You got in at 2 a.m. and you have to be up early to start your day, but you also feel extremely lucky because you work with one of your best friends who was also on the trip with you. The two of you are neighbors, you're inseparable, and you talk every single day. And your friend is pregnant with her third child and you couldn't be happier for her. She's already got two kids with her adoring husband and their lives seem picture perfect. So you drop your friend off at 2 a.m. and it's now after 9 a.m. the next day and you realize your friend hasn't texted you, which is weird because you saw her only a few hours ago and she said she'd text you because she might need a ride to her prenatal appointment today. So you're a little surprised that it's been silence. You try texting, then calling no response. Maybe you're overreacting, but this isn't like your friend. So you head over to her house just to check in. You punch the code in the front gate and march oh, confidently nothing. up to the front door. And you knock and knock, but the house is dark and silent. Where is she? She should be back from her doctor's appointment by now. And suddenly you feel a cold rush of anxiety and worry. What if something happened to her? So you call your friend's husband and don't waste any time chit-chatting. Where is your wife, you ask? And he responds, oh, she's on a play date with the kids. But you know that isn't true because you're at their house and you're looking at your friend's car in their garage and the car seats for the girls are in the car. So now you're fighting down panic. You call your friend for the hundredth time and still no answer. Where is she? Where are her two daughters? Why did her husband lie to you? Why isn't he concerned? So you grab your phone and call 911. And this is what we know. He got caught with his pants down as well. So the nightmare situation I just described was the reality that Nicole Atkinson found herself in on the morning of August 13th, 2018 in Frederick, Colorado. Now what she... And not to stop at anything, I would pick Nicole, or not Nicole, I would pick Shanann over Nicole any day, okay? She looks beautiful. I don't know what he was thinking when he was watch looking at Nicole, but I still kick myself just for watching this and just want to punch him in the face. She would later learn was that her instincts were unfortunately correct and that her friend Shanann Watts and Shanann's children would never be seen alive again. And what Nicole would be shocked to learn was that the person responsible was, was someone she never could have expected. Now, Chris Watts's heinous murder of his wife Shanann and their adorable children is a case that you're probably familiar with, at least on some level. I mean, I know a ton of people have covered this case a zillion times, yes. but we're going to take a bit of a different approach today okay. as there's more to the story than I think many might be aware of and what I've seen most often covered and I think there are larger conversations this. to be had about abusive relationships, infidelity, and the psychology of family annihilators. Like were there warning signs that friends and family missed or did a seemingly normal non-violent person just you know, snap one day. Now, there are unsung heroes of this case who I want to day. highlight, and a close re-examination of the details has me wondering if there's one other person in particular who may have assisted Chris and got away with murder. She but before did. we go too deep down into the rabbit hole, oh, hi there, hello, hello, hi, it's my face again, swoop, swoop. Swoop, 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 swoop. Uh, hi, hello, hello, welcome. I know y'all gonna come for me if I don't do the theme song and I didn't do it in the last one, so we gotta squeeze it in. Now, if you're new here, hi, my name is Swoop. I am a documentary filmmaker and am obsessed with stories that challenge what I thought I knew about them. So if you're into mind-bending deep dives that tell stories from a fresh new perspective, you've come to the right place. If that sounds good to you, please go ahead and flirt with the like button 
button, okay? Don't be coy. Okay? I've never she heard don't that like that. <laughs> also, hit subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a single deep dive. And also, I have to just forewarning. Sometimes we take it to Petty University around here, okay? Because bitch, Petty is my love language, okay? Petty is my coping mechanism for all the bullshit. So if you can relate right. and you want to join the Petty University community, welcome, come one, come all. And of course you can grab your exclusive Petty University apparel. The shop is linked below as always. And of course, a okay. general disclaimer, everything I present here is opinion based on the exactly. research. Many things have been proven in a court of law, but I will still refer in general to statements beyond the trial as opinions. alleged. Please Theories. do form your own opinion. Share it in the comments. I would love to hear what you think about what we cover today. And as always, don't spread any hate. Exactly. Okay, we are like going to dig into more of this story. But first, a big, huge thank you to our delicious sponsor, AG. Now, before we jump in, I do want to extend my deepest condolences to Shanann's family and friends over the horrifying loss of what happened to Shanann and her daughters, Bella and Beautiful Celeste, woman. and their unborn and child, Nico. This is one of the most gut-wrenching cases. I have avoided covering it for a long time, even though a lot of you have requested this one. It's just so awful. Uh, Shanann and the children were all so young and had so much life ahead of them, and to be taken like this by the one who promised to love them completely and be their Protect safe them. place is just the worst kind of betrayal. I can't even imagine what their friends and family have dealt with, but I do hope that the, over the time dad that they've been able to find some ounce of healing and that their memories will forever be a blessing. Okay, let's dive in. Shanann, Bella, Celeste, if you're out there, just, just, just come back. Like, if somebody has her, just Please bring her back. I need to see He everybody. thought he was going to get away with it, is what he 34 thought. 34 year old Shanann Watts was a fun, energetic woman and doting mother to her two little girls, Bella, aged four, and Celeste, aka Cece, aged three. She'd do anything for her children, and she wanted them to have everything growing up. There's nothing she wouldn't do for those children. She loved sharing her day-to-day -day life as a full-time mom with her Facebook friends, and she worked from home selling lifestyle products to make some side income for her family. And of course, with those types of products, there's gonna be often a lot of social media posting and building out the network, right? So she really kind of lived her life publicly in her circle. And my all-time absolute favorite of our plus line is our balance. If you have not tried balance, Balance is absolutely amazing. I bought two, got the third for free. Um, hold on, I gotta pour you more, CC. The instruction said 500, seven minutes per pound, and then, watch out, CC, watch your hands. Seven minutes per pound, and then leave in the oven on off for two hours, which seems a little long for me. Here's the girls dancing. Dance. She wants you to hold her hands, Bella. CC, I'm holding your hands. Alexa, turn it up. Now, her husband, 33-year-old Chris Watts, often made appearances in his wife's videos, I mean, and by all accounts, they had it. this kind of picture-perfect marriage. Uh, Shanann's parents loved their son-in-law and were overjoyed to see their daughter so happy. And I got a friend, friend request from Chris on Facebook, and I was like, oh, what the heck, I'm never gonna meet him. Except, but one thing led to another, and eight years later, we have two kids, we live in Colorado, and he's the best thing that has ever happened to me. And because of my health challenges, because I got so sick, I let him in. And he only knew me at that time. He knew me at my worst, and he accepted me. And, you know, through um, your vows, like through sickness and everything, he's been there. He was the one that let me lay on him and fall asleep for three and a half hours on his lap while he had to pee. Um, he is the best thing that has ever, ever happened to me. Of course, there were some reports from neighbors, which we will get into, of some incidents that happened in the driveway, some yelling, arguments, that type mm. of thing. But as far as the research goes that I've been able to do, it never really led to neighbors or people thinking it was anything beyond, you know, just like the casual marital moment that happens with a lot of couples. Now, Chris was an oil field operator for a company called Anadarko. Uh, Chris Watts, W-A-T-T-S. 
but despite his steady income, the couple faced some financial issues, which we will get into later. But in spite of those issues, which, you know, let's be honest, like many couples face those issues, unfortunately. But Shanann got pregnant with their third child and she was just like over the moon, like just thrilled. And like her children were really just the central focus of her life. And at first Chris seemed, but then something shifted and seemingly out of nowhere, Chris's personality shifted. He wasn't like the same loving, easygoing guy. He was more on the edge. And as you can imagine, Shanann, you know, being pregnant, like she's literally like with child in the womb was getting just really stressed out, right? Like I think anybody would in that situation. Mm -hmm. And at one point, Shanann actually confided in a friend via text message saying, Chris told me last night he's scared to death about this third baby. And he's Why? happy with just Bella and Celeste and doesn't want another baby. He has changed. I don't know who he is. He hasn't touched me all week, kissed me, talked to me, except for when I'm trying to figure out what is wrong. He's been distant. We've never had a problem in our relationship like this. No joke, never. This is total left field. What if he really doesn't love me anymore? He said we are not compatible anymore. He refused to hug me after he said he will try to work it out. Said he thought another baby would fix his feelings said he refused couples counseling and what? her friends tried to console her and Shanann was determined to make things work for the good of her children. I mean, if you think about it, like she's literally pregnant with this child and then her husband who was like happy about it is now like, I don't want this kid. And it's like, what the f is she supposed to do? The you child can't. is in her belly and she's yeah. having this child. I can't even imagine being in a situation like that. But also you can see that her instincts we're right here, unfortunately, that something was very, very off. One friend texted her, it will be okay, just give him time. He's adjusting to the idea of the baby. He's scared. He shouldn't be doing this to you, but he's a good guy. He will fix it. He loves you. So just a few days after these text conversations, Shanann arrived home from a work trip in the early hours of the morning on August 13th. 2018. Now her close friend Nicole Atkinson, who we mentioned earlier, dropped her off at her house at around 1.48 a.m. Shanann was glad to be home to be with her daughters and was looking forward to a prenatal appointment uh, later that day. And she was 15 weeks pregnant with a baby boy who she and Chris planned to name Nico. Nico. And she was also determined to work things out with her husband, with Chris. And like, you know, Chris had promised her that they would try to fix things. But what she didn't know was that Chris was, how do I put this? Cheating. He was dipping his toes in someone else's pool. Yes, That's good perfect one, husband Chris Watts had been getting his whistle wet by another woman, which will uncover a whole new aspect to this case that is wild. I'm sorry, I can already feel the petty brewing up inside of me because I have a lot of thoughts about this Chris character, Christopher. But we're gonna get into a little more of that because that's gonna be more of the focus. Okay. Let me ask y'all this. Like, what do you do if you've fallen out of love with your wife? Say you're Chris. Do you do couples counseling? You a try. separation trial period? You Try. Maybe a divorce. Well, if your resident genius asshole Chris Watts, apparently the only solution is to heartlessly end your whole family and tell everyone hours later, your wife did it all, not you. Now, just a yes. warning, I'm not going to get graphic about what happened. I think okay. most people probably know. know what happened. That's not the point of this doc today. There's been a zillion podcasts that share all of the horrific details. Right, here for that and detail. also the second warning, I think Chris Watts is a dumb like I I agree the petty is coming I don't I, I don't even know how else to say it but as the story progresses and with what Chris is literally saying right now like right in this present today now like I genuinely think he's a fucking dumb who routinely tries my patients constantly. I can only imagine the friends and family who've had to deal with him. So y'all were warned, okay? Y'all know a bitch is gonna tell you when I have some bias and bitch, I got some bias today, okay? Chris, Christopher, Christopher. I don't like Chris. Okay, I digress. Now we first have to briefly talk about what he did, but again, that's not the central focus of this doc, so I will be brief. In the early hours of the following morning on August 18th, which by the way, on August 17th, that woman who he was, he was dipping her. his toes in with, he was with her. 
we'll get to that. Now, after Shanann had arrived home, Chris woke her up and the two of them got in an argument about the state of their marriage. He and said he didn't now, love during her this anymore. fight, which of course, we don't know all of the exact details. We have just the words of a liar and a dumbass to go off of. But Chris Watts did the unthinkable. He climbed on top of Shanann and smothered her. Strangled her. Now, Chris's explanation of what happened next and in what order has changed several times. So I'm going to tell you what his story was at the time of his conviction, and we can get into the other versions of his story a little bit later. Which is ridiculous. And I just want to take a quick little sidebar note because this case deals with strength. And I have covered this before, like in the Gabby Petito docs when we were desperately we trying to that find one. her and found out what Brian did to her. I shared some of the details about strength relation in DV and if any of you have ever remotely experienced anything like that I just want you to be fully aware and know how dangerous that actually is I was uh, strangled um, by someone very very close to me and I've shared a few details of that and it took me years to figure out and this was purely by my own just education after having done so many of these docs but it took me years to actually understand that strangulation doesn't have to result in you no longer being alive anytime someone if they go for your throat if they uh, punch at near your throat or your face or they try to grab at or they actually get hands around or an, you know some type of object around even if you don't pass out if you live through it that doesn't doesn't mean you weren't strangled. You were, and it is a very serious indicator. It's actually one of the leading indicators that a person who does that is capable and likely to murder somebody in the future. And I don't say that's to make you feel alarmed or scared, especially if you're in a situation where that has happened with a partner or someone She's you trust. To save people. I don't want you to panic or freak out, but if you can find a private way to reach out to someone for help, there are a number of DV hotlines that you can anonymously talk to, please do talk to somebody. Because again, that is one of the leading indicators that That's the nuts. violence will escalate at some point. And I just don't want to see anybody lose their lives to exactly. something like this, especially women. We have not been educated and told that if someone does anything around your throat or even your face, that it is very serious. It is not your fault and that you have every right to get out of that situation because Please that do. can come down to saving your life. So I just wanted to share that really quick. Okay, <sighs> sorry. Okay, so back she to the again. story. Now, Chris said that he wrapped Shanann up in a bed sheet and put her in his truck. And then he got Bella and Cece and put them in the back seat. And the girls at this point were still alive and were very confused as to where they were going in the middle of the night. but. Of course, they trusted their dad. Why wouldn't they? The girls are still on the truck. Okay. Did they ask you what you were doing, taking mommy out, or? Yeah, I don't remember what I told them, but they did ask them. Yeah, what did they say specifically? It was more of like, you know, what are you doing to mommy? Chris drove to a nearby oil site where he worked, and this is where he just kind of like loosely buried Shanann in the dirt, ended his two innocent daughters, and I don't think placed he did them the in the oil tanks. That's all I'm going to say about that. Now, after committing these atrocious acts, Chris Watts got right to work erasing his family from his life. Like, he, he literally called work. his daughter's school to let them know the girls wouldn't be attending anymore. Not that, you know, like, they're just not going to be in, they're not feeling well today. No, that they wouldn't be attending at all anymore, and reached out to a realtor saying that he planned to sell his house. Then he that went off fast. to work as he would on any other day. <sighs> Okay, petty my coping mechanism. I'm gonna have to shift into this really quick. Y'all, roll the intro. Remember how I said I think Chris is an actual dumbass? Like, the man did this to his beautiful, innocent family, and then, like, within an hour or so, literally called his daughter's school to tell them they wouldn't be coming to school 
like ever. I didn't know that. Like never, like never again. And then he called to sell his house. I'm just like, what in the actual whole grain gluten-free idiocy is this? Listen, what at the end of the idiot. day, we love a stupid criminal because that helps them get caught and convicted. So love that for him. But I'm just like, what the actual, Chris, Christopher, Chris, Chris, bring it in, Chris, bring it in, okay? I don't like you, but I'm gonna have you come a little closer. Like real quick, here's a 10 second alternative thought you could have had. Instead of taking your wife and children from this world and calling schools and selling your house, how about divorce? Exactly. Here, I will spell it out, D-I-V-O-R-C-E. D-I-V-O-R-C-E. Literally 50% of marriages end this way. The stat's probably even higher than that now. So just it's, come it's on, bad. okay? Come on in, the water's fine. Join the fun, get a divorce. I'm sure there's a whole volleyball team you can join of the divorcees. It's just what you don't have to do is end your family. Just end that little piece of paper called a marriage certificate. He just it's didn't a want lot paid child easier. Support. It takes a couple of days, 10 out of 10. Would definitely recommend instead of the absolute Fuck shit hell you did to them. Sorry, y'all. I don't like Christopher. It just, this is how I cope. You do you, girl. He also Googled the lyrics to the Metallica song, Battery. The lyrics read, pounding out aggression turns into obsession, cannot kill the battery, cannot kill the family. Okay, edgelord. Hmm. What a... He needs to be beat. Something that clearly never occurred to Chris as he was busy moving on with his life was that his wife's friends cared a lot uh, about, about her. her and talked to her literally all the time, bless her. So it took only a few hours, not days, hours before Shanann's close friend, Nicole Atkinson, realized something was wrong. And our girl didn't waste a single moment listening to Chris's excuses that Shanann was, you know, on a play date with a good the kids. Friend. She called the police who searched the house that very afternoon. She is a f***ing legend for stepping up like that. Hi, Cece. My name's Nicole, and I'm calling because I'm concerned about um, a friend of mine. Um, I dropped her off at her house at 2 in the morning last night because we were out of town together, and we were on the way back from the airport, and um, she was having issues, and she's pregnant. And I haven't been able to get a hold of her this morning, and I've gone to her house, and her car is there, and... Stuff like that. Her but shoes, she won't answer purse, the door. She phone. Won't phone calls. She won't answer text messages. And I'm just really, really concerned. And she had a doctor's appointment this morning and she didn't go to it. And I'm just, I don't know what to do. I've called him and talked to him. And he said that she went on a play date with her other two daughters. But like, if she went on a play date, they're both in car seats. Why would she not take her car? These are in the ignition or on the center council of the car. Her cash, all her. ID, everything's still here. Phone's here. Police officers also went with Chris to a neighbor's house to watch surveillance footage of the street and where, he surprise, surprise, it was revealed that the only vehicle that had driven away from the Watts family house that night was Chris's. Hmm. My detective just showed up, um, so he'll probably want to talk to you. He'd probably, like I said, he might have to call at the bank and see if there's any kind of activity. Because if there is any sort of action out there, his camera, like, I would have got it. Like, right. we, had, we had issues the other, other week when people were kind of stealing stuff out of like garages and stuff like that. And I had park right here. I had here. park right here. Yeah. So you someone see if I can see where someone tried to jimmy with a flathead screwdriver. Any action would have happened, any cars or anything left your house, I would have yeah, been like right in that area. It should have picked, I mean, oh, it'll pick up anything coming down the street this way. You know where that trigger is? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, police, well, friends, maybe, yes. and family began handing out flyers and interviewing neighbors and posting on social media exactly desperate where for they information were. about what happened to Shanann and the girls. And Chris made a public plea, he used that word very lightly, for his family to be returned to him. And y'all, exactly. I'm just gonna let you decide for yourself whether or not you think he is in any way convincing let no. alone feeling any type of guilt, you know, as a worried husband and father. I hope that she's somewhere safe right now and with the kids. But I mean, could she event? Could she just taken off? I don't know. But if somebody has her and they're not safe, like I want them back now. Like that, that, that's what's in my head. Like if they're safe right now, they're gonna come back. But if they're not safe right now, that's what, that's the not knowing part. Like if they're not safe, I, I, last night I was I had every light in the house on. I was hoping that I would just get, just ran over by the kids running in the door and just like barrel rushing me, but it didn't happen. And it was just a traumatic night. 
trying Makes to be sick. here. Makes you sick. Listen to this. Nobody to be here last night and to go into their rooms and not and know that I wasn't going to turn their yeah, machine on. Yeah, he smiles the whole and time. And know that I wasn't going to turn their monitor on. No, I wasn't going to kiss them to bed tonight. It was... It, it was... I, I, that's why last night was just horrible. I couldn't do it. it I just... I just want, I want everybody to just come home. Like, wherever they're at, come home. That's what I want. Shannon, Bella, Celeste, if you're out there, just Look how he just closes his eyes like that. If somebody has her, just please bring her back. I need to see everybody. I need to see everybody again. This house is not complete with, without anybody here. You can see him please lying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, y'all. I can't with this trifling ass bullshit right now. Okay, hold on. This whole ass bitch right here. I'm sorry, and <laughs> this dick biscuit over here really dick has biscuit. the pair of low hangers to stand outside his house. The house where he literally just Killed them. ended his wife from the world. This hoe must have greased it up, threw on a banana hammock and a t-shirt and stood there like he was mother OJ Simpson or something, talking about, you know, I don't know what could have happened. Well, guess what, Chris, Christopher, you kill them and we can see right through you. So I usually go through and like do like point by point deep dive and assessment over like words and body language and that smile that he keeps showing. <laughs> I, just, I just want them to come back. I'm gonna take this horrible monster Chris Watts and I'm gonna let another horrible monster R. Kelly be the one to assess. Point and counterpoint, bitch. I hope that she's somewhere safe right now and with the kids. I hope this camera keep going. No, we're gonna this let the camera keep true. rolling. This is not true. If they're safe right now, they're gonna come back. Y'all killing me with this. But if they're not safe right now, that's what—that's the not knowing part. Like this is not doesn't even make sense. She came home from the airport 2 a.m. and I left around 5:15. She was still here. Like I had texted Shannon a few times that day, called her, say you know, but she never got back to me. But she wasn't getting back to any of her people as well. And that's what her really concerned a lot of people is like, she's not getting back to her, like if she doesn't get back to me, that's fine. Like she gets busy during the day, but she didn't get back to her people, which was very concerning. And Nicole called me when she was at the door and that's when I came home. I am not per se a supporter of the death penalty, but sometimes people really be trying it. The thing that like really gets me about this interview, firstly, not once does he make any pleas to the camera asking for any information, a task force, the community to help find his wife and kids, nothing. Half the time, he can't even refer to them by their names, uh, Shanann, Bella, Celeste, he can't even refer to them as his family. He just refers to them loosely as like anybody or like, you know, it's not the same with nobody here. I just... I just want, I want everybody to just come home. Like wherever they're he at, come chuckles, home. He chuckles, he laughs. I need to see everybody. I need to see everybody again. This house is not complete with, without anybody here. It's not anybody. It's just like, it's very telling that he's just so detached. I mean, like, do you see this yeah. heifer smiling? I would not be smiling. Smiling? I know y'all see it, right? It happens often. That is what is most disturbing to me. Like beyond what he did to his innocent family, which is, the most awful thing. In addition to that, just a few short hours after placing them in an oil well, he's smiling, literally. Chris, Christopher, Christopher, I wanna tell you something. F you, Christopher. Okay, great, thanks, class dismissed. Very Thankfully, petty. after all these BS charades and over six hours of interrogation and a polygraph test that he, he failed, failed flat on his face because we're talking about Chris Watts' dumbass. The real Chris started to come out and after failing, Chris admitted to his dad and then to police that he had in fact ended Shanann, but don't count this bitch a confessed man just yet. Mm -hmm. Oh no, Chris couldn't possibly take accountability for his acts. He that said it was her. No, instead, yes, he confessed to what he did to Shanann, but his reasoning, he claimed that Shanann was the one who had ended their kids and he was just reacting out of shock and rage. These were innocent people just trying to live. Like, can you imagine Shanann comes home, her home that she built with Chris and their kids, the place that she is supposed to feel the safest and she's attacked and ended by the one person who literally swore in front of family that he would love and protect her forever. And let's not forget that Shanann was with child and Chris has the actual audacity to blame her 
for all of this. And Why she's would no she do that? It made I no think he's sense. so deep in his disdain for Shanann and his ego-driven selfishness that his final act of evil on her is to try and make the world believe Hate that Shanann was the monster and that Shanann could have done that to Bella and Cece. And I don't know if it gets more inhumane than that, honestly. But for the time being, police had what they needed, a partial confession and most importantly, the location of where he put them. And on August 21st, Chris Watts was charged with three counts of first degree M plus two additional first degree charges for victims being 12 or younger. And he was also charged with the unlawful termination of a pregnancy and faced three counts of tampering with a body. And He's never getting out, of thank God. In Chris Watts pled guilty to all nine charges and was sentenced to life in prison. He I still got off with been his life. In Colorado. Now, there's been some updates and new information you may not be aware of about this case. So, you know, just go ahead, buckle up, place your arms inside the vehicle, legs, all of that stuff. It's time to really dig into what this doc is about. And let's start with the Her. other woman, the pool dipping toe lady, Nicole Kessinger, AKA Sketch Queen. Everything is going to plan, and still to this day, I don't even know what's a lie and what's not. I don't even know if they were like filing for divorce. I don't know if they were putting the house up. I don't even know. I don't even know. Stupidest anymore. woman when it comes to okay, lying. Okay, remember earlier when I said that Chris had been getting his flute played by another wind musician, meaning he was having an affair? Well, allow me to introduce you to his mistress, Miss Nicole Kessinger. Kessinger, Kessinger. People say it a couple of different ways. To me, it wasn't going to be an ex extended thing. Like, if it got to the point where we were, like, dating for, like, three or four months and he's still talking about, oh, I'm going to move out, I'm going to sell the house, I think at that point I probably would have just been like, I don't think you're really, like, you're doing these things you say you're going to do. And I probably would have just, like, left because at that point it's not fair. It wasn't fair to me in the first place. It wasn't fair to her in the first place. It wasn't fair to any of us in the first place. Now pause. I want to make sure no one confuses things, okay? So Nicole Kessinger, the woman Chris was cheating with, was not Shanann's friend Nicole Atkinson. The two Nicoles in this case Are couldn't different. be more different. So for the sake of clarity, I'm going to refer to Shanann's hero best friend Nicole as Nicole and Chris's mistress as, as Nikki, aka Darling Nikki. If you're a Prince fan, you know what I'm talking about. So Nikki, darling Nikki, was born in 1988 in Colorado. And now we don't know much about her upbringing beyond her father's name, but she did attend Colorado she's State a Freemason. University and graduated in 2013 with a degree in geology and geosciences. Uh, she was working under a contract with Tasman Geosciences and in 2018, Tasman was contracted to work with Anadarko Petroleum, which is where Chris worked and how they met. And fun fact, Chris did not wear his wedding ring to work, okay? If ever you needed a sign that someone is an asshole, that might be it. Now, there's a lot of speculation surrounding darling Nikki. So let's start with what we know. Now, she and Chris worked together at Anadarko Petroleum and they started exchanging work-related emails on June 12th, 2018, a few weeks after Chris learned his wife was pregnant with their third child. The relationship between Chris and Nikki got very serious very quickly. And before long, the pair were exchanging love letters and meeting in Secret. And side note, according to a forensic analysis of uh, Darling Nikki's phone, Nikki had been Googling Chris and Shanann Watts's names up to a year before she, she and Chris started emailing in the summer of 2018. A lot of That's people talk wrong. about that. So the question is, like, was she kind of like harboring a longtime crush she on, was you know, this oblivious coworker? Or did the romantic relationship between and her her and Chris actually begin back then in 2017. Like we don't know for sure because and unfortunately, police admit that once Chris confessed to his crimes, 
they pretty much halted any further investigation into Nicole and took her word for it that she and Chris had the only been dating thing for to like do. two months, which you'll see why this like really frustrates me as I think a lot of additional context and potential evidence was lost because of this move. I don't entirely know why they did this. Obviously, I'm not in law enforcement. I don't know how all of these things work, right? But we'll get to those that thoughts. Was wrong. So, back in 2018, according to Darling Nikki, Chris told her that he was in the middle of getting a divorce. So, Lies. apparently, he has no problem saying the word D I V O R C E at that time, Christopher. Sorry. Now, at the time of Chris's arrest, darling Nikki also claimed that she didn't know Shanann was pregnant yeah, until she she'd heard on the news after her disappearance. Why do I totally and completely think that's bullshit? Based off of the analysis of Darling Nikki's phone, we know that on July 24th, about a month after she and Chris exchanged those alleged first work emails, Nikki Google searched, man I'm having an affair with, says he will leave his wife. And because, white dresses, you know, two hours. nothing says, I didn't know he was married, like doing a Google search about your man leaving his wife. <laughs> but what do I know? So, Darling Nikki, darling, darling Nikki, was fully aware that she was the other woman, woman. which I'm just kind of like, if you look for a man's, there are men's out there. You know what They're I mean? Single. And like, yeah, you might have to like date around and you're gonna meet some assholes and you're gonna meet some asses, but guess what? You fell for one. I just, I don't understand the whole like, let me go after this it. guy who is like fully, fully in the wedding bag. And he's got like the kids, picket fence, all, he got all of that. But like, it just move on to someone else. I'm sorry. It wasn't fair to me to have him lie to me and make me think that everything is going to plan. And still to this day, I don't even know what's a lie and what's not. I don't even know if they were like filing for divorce. I don't know if they yeah, were putting their did. house up. I don't even know. I don't even know. Now I do need to remind all of us, including myself, that being an adulterous homewrecker is not a crime. But just because it's, it's not, not illegal it doesn't mean a bitch can't judge you for it, okay? Try keeping it in your pants next time, darling Nikki. Seriously, the whole secret marital affair thing is just like weird, but I digress. Now around that same time in July, Chris was Googling these couple of winners here. He was Googling when to say I love you for the first time in a new relationship. By early August in 2018, darling Nikki was Googling wedding dresses or and hours. typing in things like marrying your mistress. She was clearly convinced that she and Chris were a sealed deal, even though she knew he was married to somebody else. You know, she's just like, I got him in the bag, done and dusted. All he needs is a divorce and my ring size. But you know what like really gets me about dirty little darling Nikki here is she also looked up Shanann's Facebook account. Now, a reminder, Shanann posted Everything. much of her life on her Facebook page. Like, bless her heart, the girl, you know, the, the concept of overshare. Shanann was doing a little bit of this, you know? I should know, I've done it myself. But while scheming in the dark and, you know, sniffing out her competition, you know, the married man's wife, darling Nikki would have seen Shanann's Facebook post Everything. that had the video announcement about her and Chris expecting another child, because it was something she mentioned, like, literally on every other post. So pink means... That's just the test. I know. It just says the pink is gonna be girls. I don't know. Yet a few weeks later, Nikki would tell police that she had no idea, no idea that Shanann was pregnant until she saw it in the news. I'm sorry, I'm, oh, I'm acting crap. like this because I call bullshit. Like just, you know, ripe old marinated, aged to perfection, spread over a yes. buttery biscuit bullshit. I take a step back and it's just like, I didn't know. Like, I, I, uh, it's. She's over exaggerating. He's so too. disgusting. I'm so ashamed of him and everything. I'm ashamed and of you. I, just, I think 
Nikki likely lied to make herself look better in the interviews with police. And the big question being, was she potentially lying just to save face? Or was she lying because she was covering up some type of involvement? I mean, listen, y'all, okay. Do you remember the Scott oh. Peterson case? I know yes. it sounds like I'm taking a detour, but just a quick refresh. In 2004, Scott Peterson was tried and convicted for the unaliving of, wait for it, his pregnant wife. He and Chris could honestly be pen pals. And what else do Chris Watts and Scott Peterson have in common? They Mistress. were both having affairs on their pregnant wives. Yes, Scott Peterson was having an affair with a woman named Amber Fry, and it became, you know, a central focus of the trial where she actually testified. Scott told me he was not married. And so back to darling Nikki over here, after Chris ended his entire family, guess what Miss Darling Nikki's little Google. fingers were busy doing? Do she was it? literally hitting up the Google machine and she asked the Googler, did people hate Amber Fry? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just leave that right there. Let y'all talk amongst yourselves. But don't worry because these Google searches are about to get a whole lot worse. They get bad. For it's Nikki. so bad. So on the afternoon of the crimes, meaning Chris had ended his beautiful, innocent family, Chris and Nikki had several phone calls back and forth that lasted until about 2 a.m. the following morning. And we don't know what the pair discussed on those calls, but it's interesting to note that later the next day, August 14th, uh, Nikki started Googling things like, can cops trace text messages? Which I just, can I? I'm sorry, I gotta do it. Nikki, do it. Nikki, 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 come here. How you gonna be worried asking if cops can trace text messages and put in your internet search history, can cops trace text messages? Like child, how did you not think that they'd also be tracing your Google search history? You're worried about some text, but not your Googling of super suspicious searches about hiding said text from said police. Make it make yeah. sense, Nikki, Nikki. Oh, someone need to tell Nikki to have a seat. Have several seats, okay? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm done. I'm hoping Nikki watches this. But you know what, I'm not entirely done because Nikki also tried to delete all of her text messages with Chris and his contact card. <laughs> oh, not the con, not the contact card. Listen, I get it. We don't fully know the potential extent of Nikki's involvement. Maybe she somehow didn't know some things. And we know that if she genuinely didn't know that people can react to, you know, that kind of shock shocking news she in all them. kinds of ways. But when your first she course helped. of action after the news breaks of what happened, when your first reaction is to delete any potential evidence that you were boinking the killer, that's what the kids call sus, okay? We on August 15th, so this is two days after Chris ended his family, the darling Nikki came forward to the police to let them know that she was having an affair with Chris, something police actually already knew due to a tip off from the Anadarko regional they met manager in a parking where she and Chris worked. And I imagine she didn't park. just volunteer thinking nobody knew. I'm sure she was like, probably figured they already knew and was terrified. The police got a hold of those texts she was trying to hide. And when they asked her about them, she admitted they were embarrassing and raunchy and she didn't want any of it to get out, which, okay, fine, understandable, if that's actually the truth. But so just to paint the full, awful Spectrum. picture. This is also around the time that she started Googling about Scott Peterson's mistress, Amber Fry. Remember we just talked about that mistress? About but that book. Google search gets even more fucked up because in Nikki's searches, darling Nikki over here was actually trying to assess how much money the Scott's mistress, Amber Fry made Out off of book. her Scott Peterson cheating scandal, bitch, I'm sorry. When the whole grain gluten-free Pete Davidson on a mixed green salad, who the hell is Googling how much money a mistress to a murderer 
can make. Kristen, does that make any sense to you, Kristen? I didn't think so, Samantha. I know, yeah, we on the same page, Samantha. Yeah, you got you got it, girl. So for someone to be Googling how much money she could potentially make from the situation- That's bad in itself. Days after learning that the man she loves ended his whole family is callous at best. But after Chris confessed to the M's, Nikki wasn't questioned any further. Someone Which explain to me why that is the thing. Because yeah. I still have questions of my own. So let's listen to a few clips from Nikki's interview with Weld County Detectives. This interview takes place after it's become known that Chris Watts has ended innocent Shanann and his family. I think I met him sometime in June, probably early June. It might've been May. It was just talking at work. It was pretty casual. Um, and uh, he didn't have a wedding ring on his finger. And every time I talked to him, he didn't tell me that he was in a relationship. He didn't even mention But she kids Googled them a year before. And then one day he told me that he had two kids. I was like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and uh, started telling me about his kids. That sounded like a sarcastic comment. No, I thought it was kind of cute. I was like, oh, he's a dad. It was like right around Father's Day, too. So whenever that is, is in June? So I'm not good with holidays. He told me he had kids, and then it was Father's Day shortly after okay. that. So that's what I do now. And I was like, I know, I thought it was cute. And then um, he mentioned that he did have a significant other. And then he told me that those two were in the process of a separation. Um, I didn't know his significant other's name for a while. And then I think he told me his kids' names pretty quick. But to be honest with you, on an exact date of when that happened, I don't know. So she it's didn't such know Shanann's name, even though she'd been Googling it up and to Facebook. a year prior. Okay. Also, am I the only one who thinks it's weird how flippant she's acting? I mean, at this yes. point, she knows that her lover did this to his whole family, including very, very small kids. kids. Um, one of those two days. But we had went out, and we stopped there just real quick on the way back. And we were there not very long. But that time, I saw a picture of his wife and one of his kids. And I remember thinking to myself, like, wow, she's so beautiful. And I, like, took a step back, and I was just like, this man has a gorgeous house. He has beautiful babies. He has a beautiful wife. He has an awesome job. Like, why would he want to leave this? Exactly. Talking him about it. And that was the first time that I tried to actually say, what do you think about not separating from your wife? Like, what if you really try to work on this? And he had expressed to me that we've tried to work on this, and it's not working, so that is why we're separating. And I spent some time, like, just, you know, kind of, because it, it almost made me feel she bad, where not. I was, like, to the point where I'm engaging in a relationship with a man who, the way he described it, is in a contractual agreement, but was not in, like, an emotional relationship with somebody. Um, and for me, the way I would have preferred to do this is to have waited till that contractual agreement was also done and he was done i really try to take everything with this whole situation very slow the only part that i screwed up on was the fact that he wasn't completely separated from her when him and i decided to spend time with each other that is where i screwed up but other than that everything else it was always like you build your life i'm gonna build my life we will intertwine them but i am not ready to like do this well, i do oh, love crap. that she claims she wanted to take things slow i mean you know, wedding slow, dresses? like, literally Googling wedding dresses two months after their affair began. I mean, I don't know. I usually Google wedding dresses after the third date, okay? So that's totally, I guess she was taking it slow, because I'm really, like, you know, on date one, I'm like, what size wedding dress am I going to be? Does he like white or off-white? <laughs> the aisle, y'all. I can't, this is, I put this, I wear this giant ring here cause I'm like, there ain't no room for nobody to slip no engagement ring on this finger, okay? The space has been taken up, okay? <laughs> Don't come with me with an engagement. <laughs> I ain't the one. <laughs> Sorry, y'all know, again, petty coping mechanism. I gotta, I have to make this palatable because I just think like this stuff with darling Nikki is so just kind of absurd to me. In the short period of time that you guys were together, he yes. became very attached to you. Yes. Very, very I mean, He's attached. sending cards. Flowers. He's telling you he loves you. He sends you flowers. Does he buy you any other gifts? Nope. I wouldn't have wanted him anyways. That's, flowers is enough. You can't, <laughs> I don't need expensive stuff. Okay. Oh, <laughs> but crap. he becomes very attached. Yes. Um, you guys are talking multiple times a day, at least. You're All the time. You're seeing each other on a regular basis. Yep. Um, so it, it, it's a very 
uh, and, and his wife is not around, nor are his children, so there's a lot of time for you guys to build your relationship in this first four four weeks or so. Is that fair? Yeah, and even when she, she was back, I mean, it was still like we were still spending time together. He was still spending time with his children, and I had my own life. Like, it's not fair. It wasn't fair to me in the first place. It wasn't fair to her in the first place. It wasn't fair to any of us in the first place. It wasn't fair to me to have him lie to me and make me think that everything is going to plan and I don't even know I don't even know. But in my opinion, Nikki keeps kind of pulling the victim. She seems pretty focused on how the situation affects her and yeah. ironically doesn't understand that she very much helped create this unfair yes, she situation did. by being involved with a married man. Even if she did believe what he was telling her, she was simultaneously looking at Shanann's Facebook posts and Shanann was very public about how happy her marriage and family life was. All of that to say, we're not always good at telling when someone is lying or telling the truth, but also common sense and logic needs to have a place in there at some point. On the morning of August 13th, just after he ended his family, Chris Googled those Metallica lyrics that I you know, mentioned earlier. He would later claim that darling Nikki was the person who told him to look up those lyrics. And if that's true, that paints Which is Nikki in a very bad, bad light. Spot. But when looking over the evidence, I wonder if this is yet another example of Chris lying. Like he was the one who was the Metallica fan, not Nikki to our knowledge. Oh, 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 yeah, definitely wearing this. Are you serious? Also, we know from their phone records that the pair had no contact on the morning of the Because they were crime. together. So I'm not sure how she could have That's why. told him to look up the song unless she was there that night, which leads us to another we'll call it conspiracy theory that has popped up online. Neighbors have given statements that they saw a truck near the house that wasn't Chris's on the night of the Nikki's. crime. And some people speculate that this was Nikki's truck because at 6.16 a.m. on the morning of the crime, Nikki's cell phone, Miss Darling tower. Nikki's, Mistress Nikki's cell phone pinged in Frederick, Colorado, where the Watts family lived, which is odd because she lived 20 minutes away and 20 minutes without traffic, that's quite a distance away. But you know, there isn't any security footage that shows her vehicle. Which and like, ridiculous. let's be honest, Chris really did not do a good job of covering his tracks. So it's hard to believe in certain ways that he'd be able to hide it if Nikki was also there. No, but still like her cell I phone think... ping is it's odd. It seals now the, another the undeniably kind of strange, odd bit of behavior is that mere hours after he ended his family, Chris and Nikki are on the phone, and according to Nikki, she encouraged him to sell the pawn ring. his wife's wedding ring. When we were on the another phone, one. at one point, he mentioned to me, I can't even believe I have to say this. She left her wedding ring here. And I said something along the lines of does that mean you two are done? And he was like, oh my God. He said, how much do you think it's worth? And I was like, I remember hearing him say that and being like, what the fuck? And I remember thinking to myself, like, I don't even want to respond to this. And so I was like, I don't know, pawn it, man. And I was just like, I was like, I pawn jewelry all the time. I was like, I pawn jewelry a few times. I was like, it's not worth shit, though. And I was like, so I don't know if you really want to do that. And he's like, no, no. I think I'm going to get it appraised. It's a nice rock. And I was just like, okay. Nikki, <laughs> I just, I have questions, so like crap. so many questions. Where is Nicole now? Well, in the years since the crime. She has changed her name and thankfully did not publish a book about being Chris she moved Watts states, though. mistress. I don't know. Maybe her Google searches about how much money Amber Fry made off of Scott and what he did to his wife proved to not be a very lucrative business. I don't know. Now, Chris, <laughs> He claims that Nikki still writes letters to him in prison yep. using her new name. And according to him, the pair are still very much in love. Now, the problem with Chris Watts is that besides being a fucking 
asshole of epic proportions, he's also a liar. F Chris Watts feelings, I don't care. But on the flip side, Chris is also obsessed with blaming darling Nikki for his actions. An author oh, named really? Cheryl Cadle has been in regular contact with Chris and has gone on to publish a book of his letters to her. This is what Chris said about darling Nikki. Ooh. If I had not met Nikki, I would never have ended my family. Yay. So this winner went from blaming his pregnant wife to blaming his mistress for the repugnant, disgusting shit that he did with his own literal bare hands. Winner, winner, fuck your helped. dinner. Currently, like this is happening now. When asked to describe darling Nikki, he mentioned a Bible verse in Proverbs chapter seven, verse 25 through 27, part of which reads, don't let your heart lead you to an evil woman like that. Don't go where she wants to lead you. She has brought down some of the most powerful men. She has left many dead bodies in her path. Her house is the place of death. The road to it leads straight to the grave. That's... It's clear to me that Chris is trying to blame Nikki for his monstrous actions because she led him down the wrong path. And the bottom line is that whether Nikki knew more than she admitted to, or even if we, you know, take it to the farthest extent and suspect that Nikki could have wow, dude. helped in some kind of way, I think Chris she did. absolutely deserves every second he spends in prison. But you know, in my opinion, there does seem to be enough questions surrounding darling Nikki, Nikki away. that I would, you know, think warrants further investigation. Exactly. But I don't think that's ever going to happen. And I'm just really, really concerned. And she don't say never. Morning and she didn't go to it and called him and talked to him. And he said that she went on a play date with her other two daughters. Now, just to shift gears for a moment, in a case that is so dark and devastating, it's important to remember the kind of unsung heroes, if you will, you know, the people who brought Chris Watts to justice swiftly and efficiently. Detectives Nicole in this Atkinson. case had to figure out a way to bring Chris's guard down. Like they needed him to think that they were on his side that so that woman. he would tell them where his family was. Chris, Dad. like anyone, didn't want to be seen as a monster. Like he wasn't a bad guy. He must have had a good reason for these actions, right? Watch how expertly this pair played Chris like a fiddle. First, they tell him he's normal for lying to them. It's what anyone would do. And then they give him an out by painting Shanann as the bad guy so Chris could be the good guy. I know, I know you want to tell us. I, I, can, I can see it in your face. Holding this lie in is going to do nothing for you. I, I know this. Like, okay. I'm not, like, trying to, like, cover things up. Like, if, yeah, but you kind of are because in, in they normal, failed the normal, test already. normal people would do that. Normal people that make a mistake initially are going to go, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do anything. That's normal. She did anything to these kids. We both love them with all our hearts. There's no way. Did something happen to these baby girls first that you had to take into your own hands and deal with? You had to clean it up for Shanann. Chris, you got to tell us. I feel like that's the type of guy that you are. Now, the Chris they Watts case like was fiddle. solved extremely quickly because his victims, his family, were found right away. And more importantly, there was a ton of forensic evidence on them. And also, let's not forget, Chris is a d so there's also that. Yep. I mean, the bitch boy folded like a wet newspaper under the pressure of the investigator's expert interrogation. Even the subtle ways the investigator just like would put her hand like on his back to like kind of be like reassuring, there, there, it's okay, Christopher, but really we're gonna nail your ass. Love it. Pretty At much. the end of the day, you can't solve a crime like this if you don't know a crime has even been committed. And the reason this case was solved so quickly is down to how fast Shanann and the girls were reported missing. And for that, that we have Nicole Shanann's Atkinson. friend, Nicole Atkinson, to thank the hero, She's Nicole. She's the big hero. Nicole just sprung into action. Like when Shanann missed her doctor's appointment at 9 a.m., Nicole wasted no time in going to the doctor's office herself, confirming Shanann wasn't there, and then calling the police. And bravo. 
and this leads me to another fact, which I think is super important for us all to remember for our own safety. There's a myth that you have to wait 24 or 48 hours to file a missing persons report. This sadly used to be true in many places in the US which and this policy actually led to a lot of unnecessary deaths and trails just going completely cold. Fortunately, it's no longer the case and we have to commend you know, the police in this particular case for their quick action. I wish other victims, especially victims from marginalized communities, got this same kind of fast action all the time. But at least here, at least this family did. Um, and it's really important that we know you don't have to wait 24 or 48 hours. You can call immediately. If you know something's wrong, just call. Better to be safe than not. And the police took Shanann's friend Nicole's concern seriously and sent an officer out that way, you know, that very afternoon to meet with her. And, they and called normal, him. Normal. Normal people would do that. Normal people that make a mistake initially are going to go, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do anything. That's normal. Now, I want to take a breath for a moment and zoom out from this case to a more global perspective in regards to abusive relationships. Now, y'all know that with a swoop doc, I like to take a sidebar moment to discuss warning signs and red flags in general in order to help you be able to identify any potential signals that might be happening in your own life or a friend or a family member. And I believe that the more that we talk about this and normalize these conversations, the more better equipped we are at People identifying the signs themselves. and learning how to handle these situations and better protect ourselves. So the most visible form of abuse is physical or DV. But in this case alone, I've seen countless interviews with friends and family who claim that Chris never exhibited any violent behavior, which in many ways makes this even more terrifying, right? Like how do you spot the devil in sheep's clothing when he never shows his horns until it's just too late. Now, you're not going to believe this because this just kind of shocked the sh out of me. But statistically speaking, Shanann was actually at an increased risk for DV because she was pregnant. Yeah. You heard that right, unfortunately. DV is more common than any other health problem among women during pregnancy. It greatly threatens both Why? the mother's and baby's health. DV is a pattern of assault, coercive behavior, including physical, sexual, and psychological attacks, as well as economic coercion that adults use against their partners. Now, to expand on that a moment, here is a list of facts from the DV and pregnancy fact sheet. H is the leading cause of death among pregnant women in the United States. 50 to 75% of women abused before pregnancy are abused during. It is estimated that up to 20% of pregnant women experience violence during their pregnancy. And 77% of pregnant H victims are killed early during the first trimester. What I genuinely can't think of something much more up than assaulting a pregnant person. It makes me absolutely sick yeah, to think exactly. about that. Like the research reveals, it all has to do with control, right? It's like when a woman gets pregnant, this can cause an abusive partner to feel like they are not in charge of the situation anymore. Control in a relationship is a frequent indicator of abuse. You and that it control when you... can be exerted in many different ways. Like Just you might be it. familiar with the power and control cycle of abuse. I've shown it uh, in previous docs before. But to recap, there's use of intimidation, emotional abuse, using isolation, minimizing, isolating, and blaming, using male privilege, economic abuse, coercion, and threats. Not to make this about me at all, but just to be open in hopes that it might help some of you feel comfortable uh, being open about what you've survived and know that it's okay to talk about it, and I promise you it is. I am a survivor of IPV with more than one person, DV and SA, and I can tell you without a doubt, it can be hard to even recognize the warning signs if you're in a relationship with someone who has control issues that are abusive. My first relationship was with a significantly older man who groomed me as a child and then repeatedly assaulted me as a child, and I was totally alone. 
he was really skilled at gaslighting and manipulating me and made me feel like if I ever told anyone what he was doing to me, he'd convince me that I would lose everything that I ever cared about, um, that I would get expelled from school and my parents would disown me and my friends would hate me. And on top of all of that, that I'd, I'd burn in hell for my sins. When in actuality, it those coercive control techniques that he was doing of you know, like isolating me and blaming me and using intimidation like all of those abuse tactics made me feel like I had just no power no family support no friends and no one to talk to it's hard to see it it really is and that's not your fault uh, for example like does your partner regularly check your credit card statements and get upset when they see you've been spending your money does no. your partner guilt trip you every time you choose to hang out with your friends instead of with them like do you notice you know like your partner saying negative things about your close friends and family in an attempt to get you to distance yourself from those other people the only reason an abuser exerts coercive control is because they they're afraid of the power that you have. I'm literally not it. making this up. They know deep down that you could potentially destroy them if you spoke out, if you left them. That's what I was told when I was a child with this very much older adult man that if I ever talked to anybody that I would destroy him and then I would destroy my own family and I don't want to be responsible responsible for that. No one would forgive me for doing that. They lose all of the power in those scenarios and they know that you're the one who can flip that power switch. And I'm not saying this to like make any one of you feel pressured if you currently are in an abusive I'm situation. I just want you to spell? know that regardless of what lies this person in your life may have told you, may be telling you right now or might be telling a friend of yours or a family member of yours you do have power and you do have options and there are organizations ready and willing to help support you however you need so you if need you it. feel you can reach out safely whenever you're ready and not a moment before. This is only on your time and I just want you to know that you are worth it. You are worth getting out of that abusive relationship. I know that they're telling you that you're not, that you're making it bigger in your head than it really is, that it's nothing, that it's somehow your fault. It's not. You are worth it. You do deserve to get out. There are ways to do it safely. You are so valuable and I believe you and I believe what you're going through and I know that you are strong enough to get out of it. <sighs> okay, sorry. Little Dude, sidebar emotional. moment. We're gonna get back to the story. I know that from that interrogation and all that was like a like a coercive type psychological intimidation of someone that, you know, had never been in that situation before. A family annihilator, and I don't know how often I could say that word, so I'm gonna say a family A, is someone who annihilates their family. <laughs> yeah, what it what it says basically in the name tag. But the term exists because it's common enough for there to be an existing profile of this type of person who commits this type of awful thing. The profile looks like this. They are typically male, they're middle or upper class, they're upstanding family men, there are often signs of financial troubles, and they tend to fit the profile of of a negative narcissist. Family A's are not necessarily violent, which makes their abuse harder to spot. And my question is, does this profile fit Chris Watts? Yes. Well, let's start with an element that's not widely discussed and is actually a recent development in the case. So Chris Watts has recently begun issuing statements that, surprise, surprise, the bitch wants to get out of prison. He's uh, not a it. risk to the general public, he says. And more importantly, he's a change man. How has he changed? By finding faith and redemption because God has bigger plans for him, according to Chris. And those plans can't be accomplished behind bars, conveniently. I want to get, I know that God has a plan for me. It's not, it's to be in prison right now, but hey, Jerry, have you brought me here for a reason? But yeah, I'll be watching you just put me outside. And I know I just can't sit here and just wait. Wait, wait, You're gonna wait until waiting, you die. Nothing in this waiting that I'm uh, speaking in action, but that's what I'm doing. But I also want to know like what action to take because I have no, no. This man is stupider than a box of rocks. But I can't wait until I'm dead. Like that's what I'm just waiting for. Like things to fall into place. I'm still gonna have to do it. Okay. 
I'm sorry, okay, we had an emotional moment and now I gotta go back to being Professor Petty. All of this self-pity, victim mentality, God is on my side, streaming out of Chris Watts from his ass and his face, all this, that region, yeah. It's got me feeling just like a certain type of way. Chris has confessed to ending his family multiple times and he has the gall, the gumption, the unmitigated audacity to complain that his interrogation was a coercive type psychological interrogation. They asked me, I was just agreeing with them and just going along with what they said. They were like, well, you gotta tell them something. And even when they came here to prison and interrogated me, they were in the street clothes acting like they didn't, you know, they were just talking to me when retrospect they were actually interrogating me again. I know that from that interrogation to the first one, and all that was like a like a coercive type psychological intimidation of someone that you know had never been in that situation before <gasps> Yeah, I'm, it I'm was, it feels. was, and it's a beautiful thing to watch, Christopher, Chris, Chris, Chrissy, Chrissy boy, bring it in, Chrissy. You annihilated your family for no effing reason. You will be there. You got caught, you death. got convicted, so you can f be f off to f off mountain and sing the national anthem of I don't give a f because guess what? I don't give a f <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I get in trouble for that one, but I don't give a toot. I don't give a toot! Friendly reminder again that thanks to our hero, Nicole Atkinson, it took police all of like 15 minutes to squeeze that confession out of him and arrest him. What, like it's hard? Oh, and that's not all. As if Shanann's family hasn't been through enough, Chris keeps changing his story about how he committed these crimes and with each retelling, the details just get worse. In his latest version, he says that he smothered both Bella and Celeste twice and they because they up. didn't actually pass the first time. This doesn't line up with his original confessions, nor does it line up with the official version of the case told at trial. He's literally saying that he did this to his daughters twice, that he was capable of doing this to them twice. But then he wants to like turn around and talk out of his ass face and be like, yeah, I'm not a danger to society. No. God's got plans for Chris me. really yeah. seems like a changed man who feels like a lot of remorse for his actions, doesn't he? I mean, I would totally feel safe with this delusional person out on the street. Sorry, I'm really choosing my words now because I have said a lot of things about him because I don't like Chris. Anyways, recently Chris spoke to a man posing as a friend of a friend who tells Chris that he's basically the underdog. Whatever you're trying to do, you're always being told no. What you can't do is allow yourself to lose hope. Don't take no for an answer and don't give up the first time you're told no. You, you understand? Yeah. So the key in all this is you you gotta be strong. You gotta be physically strong. You gotta be mentally strong. And you've got to understand that, you know what? You're, you're the underdog, but underdogs underdogs can win. I hope this camera keep going. No, we're gonna this let is the not camera true. keep going. And Chris, of course, sees himself that way. A changed man who is violently, violent, valiantly, valiant, valiantly, valiantly. I think that's the word. Chris, of course, sees himself that way. A changed man who is valiantly Ridiculous. trying to break free from an unfair prison sentence. So he can go... Miss me with this victim mindset, please and thank you, tiny piece of fecal matter. Okay. Yo, kill me with this shit. Class dismissed. child. Okay, I need a whole lot of cute kitties to cleanse my soul after this one. This one was ups and downs. I'm sorry, y'all. There was a lot of petty coping. It's triggering. We got a little emotional. I hope for those of you that my words about uh, if you're experiencing I was right there I with you. That you can take at least some of that to heart if it helps. I learned some even stuff. Even just one of you. That is all I can ask for. But let's look at the babies. The babies, aren't they just the cutest? I just love them so much. Excuse, please, the tone shift. I have to say some things that I say at the end of all of my docs. If you want to join the Petty University community, welcome, come one, come all. Would love to have you. Also, if you want to grab uh, your original Petty University apparel items, those are linked below as well. A couple of Twitter shout outs from my last doc. It is part three of the deep dive into the Moscow, Idaho case against Brian Koberger. If you haven't seen it, it is linked below. We dig into all of the new evidence as that case has. 
I want to take another moment to remember the beautiful, innocent, deserving lives of Shanann, her daughters Bella, They're and adorable taken away Celeste, too soon. and her unborn child Nico. The devastation and toll this disgusting man's actions have caused is so utterly senseless and unfair. I know that nothing will ever be able to bring them back to this world and in the arms of their family and friends, but I do truly hope that at the very least his conviction provides some type of shred of healing for them and I hope that no matter what that the memories of Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and Nico will always be a blessing. This case is particularly terrifying because it's an example of evil hiding in plain sight. Chris may have been abhorrent to his wife in the weeks leading up to the crime but he wasn't overtly abusive. Like Shanann was upset with him, yes, but she wasn't afraid of him that we're aware of. The warning signs here were so easily overlooked if they were even there at all. If you are expecting and your partner has expressed negative feelings about the pregnancy, try and provide a safe you space happy. for them I was to happy share what my... they're feeling and hopefully they're open to communicating towards solutions that are healthy and if they are not you have options this was a pretty heavy video and i want to end on a positive note so here it is be like nicole not nikki the other one our home girl nicole nicole atkinson trust your gut and be a staunch hug your supporter friends. of your friends and loved ones period in fact go hug your best friends this week okay that's all i can say and and take care of yourself and know that you are valid worthy and you don't have to stay in a relationship if it's hurting you you don't. Be kind and y'all know when all else fails, stay ready, stay petty, class dismissed. Swoop! To be continued. So I don't see another one that she's uploaded about this one. This was uploaded five months ago. So I definitely, she put a, a lot of information into this video. A lot of new things that we didn't know that I didn't know myself, but Still to this day, I, my theory and my opinion, like a lot of hundreds, thousands of you, millions of you guys have mentioned, Nicole was involved. Nicole did a lot of things bad that she pretty much found out that she did wrong and she was trying to cover herself up and get into it. Now, when it comes to the letters and stuff like that, that we've seen that she's been sending and stuff like that. I would love to watch that video. I do want to know if you guys want me to react to that and so forth like that because a lot of people have been asking for it. So comment down below what you guys' thoughts are. I know a lot of you still to this day think that Nicole is an accessory to murder, which I do believe as well. Um, I just want to know your guys' thoughts. Hit the like button for her to get into prison, to be accountable for her actions and to breaking and annihilating the family that she knew because she looked up them way before she even decided to start emailing uh, Chris. So I call BS on all that. So um, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Please be, or please take care of you guys yourselves. And like she said, the swoop girl, if you feel like you're being controlled and, and so like that and need a way out, there are people, there's that number on the hotline um, for the DV. So please use it if, if need be. I'm always here to talk to anybody um, for anything. I'm, I literally talk to my fans. I, I talk to them. Ask the other fans. I talk to you guys all the time. Plus, we stream every Sunday or every other Sunday on uh, stream so I can be here for you guys. Um, and with that being said, have a great day. Keep it real. Keep it safe. And as always, keep nerding on. And we'll see you guys next time.